you guys. I miss you. Oh, this is hard. <laughs> oh, golly. I'm hanging in there. Hopefully you guys are hanging in there too. Um, this is a video for both my TV broadcast class uh, and my video production class. Um, you guys are all awesome. Um, I've seen some amazing work out of you. Even in these struggling times, people have still handed me assignments. And I'm like, wow, you know, like I wasn't looking over your shoulder when you did that. Um, in fact, somebody's uh, video came up in my YouTube recommendations feed. And I was like, dang, Jackson, all right, let's do this. It was pretty cool. Um, so Jackson for my video production class. Um, very cool, very, very cool. Um, I want to check in with you guys probably about once a week on a video like this. Um, I want to I want to keep things rolling, right? Even though things are weird and, and whatever, we're not in school. I want to keep some semblance of normalcy. Um, and uh, hopefully we're able to do that uh, even though you know we're not together and we're not, you know we're all isolated and stuff. but uh, hopefully we can get through this and really feel, productive, um, contributing members of society. I'm sure a lot of people are feeling kind of an existential crisis right now, you know? Like some people have to work, some people, you know, need to work, right? I saw the people at Costco and stuff, and they're like working their tails off trying to make things happen. And then, you know, I see people like my mom, for example, who's one of the non-essentials, right? And um, she, she's struggling with it, you know? She's like, dang, my... You know, my, my job that I thought was really, you know, worthwhile and important, now when there's some stinking bug, I, I don't feel as important anymore. You know, like it just, it, it's hitting a lot of people hard. And I'm sure it's hitting a lot of you guys hard too. Um, cry it out, talk it out. I'm here for you too. Email me through Canvas or, or directly. Um, if you're having, you know, you're having a hard time, there are, there are resources for you. Um, if you're struggling and stuff, but uh, on a lighter note, I've been I've been having fun. I don't know if you guys have seen, but on our Canvas page, let's shoot over to our Canvas page. Um, by the way, this is a TV broadcasting page, but the one for video production is going to look very similar to this. Um, I have been very diligently making daily videos, and they're just sort of all over the place. Um, I filmed one yesterday. No, today. Duh. Um, and uh, I'm going to post it. I'm going to post it today here after I'm done with you guys. But uh, it just you know, it's random stuff. Um, I have read books. I have uh, gone on excursions and challenges and things. Uh, if you've got some wild ideas that you'd love to see, drop them in the comments or, or email me or, or go through Canvas or something. Um, you know, it's just kind of wacky, random out there things that I've been having fun doing, just to sort of break up the monotony. Right? And I think that's sort of one of the things that, that we need to remember. In fact, I've got four things that I want you to remember. Um, number one, don't let the anxiety get to you. Right? We've had viruses, earthquakes. We just barely heard, heard about an earthquake in Idaho, for heaven's sakes. It just barely happened. Bigger than the one we had here. Physical distancing. Right? All of these are huge breaks on your routine. There's a lot trying to let us down, you know, to bring us down. Find some kind of hobby, find an interest that keeps your mind occupied or else you go stir crazy. And don't just tell yourself, oh, I'll get by on video games. It's not going to happen, right? Get out and run. Go exercise. Um, I've been playing drums more. He's one of the videos, I cleared out my garage so I could play drums more. Um, and it's really helped, right? I, you need some kind of outlet. I used to play every other Thursday night with a, with a band. And now I don't have my band anymore. And I'm like, oh crap, what do I do? So I set up my CD player and I started, you know, playing along to the old tracks that I've loved to play since I was, you know, since I first started playing. Um, and, you know, it's just kind of like that familiar thing that you need to come back to, whatever that is, whether that's photography or connecting with people on social media or hiking or dog grooming, or I don't know, whatever, like whatever your interests are, Make those happen just to break up the monotony. Um, and then to number two, schedule, you know, keep to a schedule, keep to a routine. Stick to a schedule that's familiar to you, right? Wake up early, walk the dog, uh, whatever you've been doing or you had been doing before all of this hit the fan, <laughs> um, what can you do in its place, 
hopefully you can have some kind of normalcy in that sort of repetitive routine. I wake up every day, my alarm goes off as if I was going to work, um, you know, the same time every day, just like always. I get up, I shower, I take the dog for a walk instead of walking to school, and um, you know, I try to keep some semblance of normalcy. And then I have a couple of hours where I answer emails and I get work stuff done, and then I kind of go throughout my day. And you need to kind of have that routine, maintain some semblance of a routine, right? Um, the third thing, break up the monotony of your routine, right? The same thing every day might get a little old, but uh, you know, do something unexpected. Not something that'll get you in trouble or end up on the news or something, right? But do something unexpected. Surprise yourself. Break the routine once in a while. Spice up your life. Keep life interesting. Um, I've been doing that, number one, by making those crazy videos. They're up on YouTube. They're also up on, uh, I embedded them into the Canvas page. You can watch them. Some of them are hilarious. Some are just like, oh, yeah, that's so Miller. Um, but just, you know, whatever, whatever comes into my head, I'll make a video about it. But break up that monotony so it doesn't seem like the same thing over and over and over. And then that's just going to drive you crazy, right? So one thing that I'll add to the one before it, keeping to a schedule and a routine, uh, don't ever fall into the default, whatever the default was, you know. If you treat this just like free time, just like, oh, yeah, I get to play video games. I get to just be lazy. Um, it's going to terrorize you. It's going to eat you alive, okay? So don't find yourself just like, oh, cool, I get all the time in the world to just do whatever. Because then you're going to like not live a fulfilling life and you're going to feel terrible, right? So try to live a fulfilling life even if that fulfilling life is basically the same thing over and over again at, you know, in the comfort of your own home, right? <laughs> at home. So, um, so keep a routine, break up the monotony once in a while. And then here's the big one. Number four, think of physical distancing instead of social distancing. I want you to maintain your social connections, whether that's texting people, over the phone, through social media, right? Don't let the social part of that like alienate you. Um, don't let the physical distance limit your social interactions. Um, case in point, you know, yesterday I had to go out and get something and uh, I was just waiting in line and, and I overheard the guy in front of me and I chimed in and just kind of, we had this great little conversation seven feet apart from each other and uh, we just, we had a blast. It was fun. And I was like, dang, I miss that. You know, I keep joking with my wife after this, we're going to have this huge block party with all our neighbors, right? We'll just, just party it up because we miss these social interactions. We might not be able to meet in person, but maintain those physical or those social interactions as well as you can, you know, whether that's texting people, catching up, uh, you know, there's that earthquake in, in uh, Idaho. My grandma lives in Idaho, so I'm, I, I want to call my, mom, my grandma and check in with her, make sure she's okay. Uh, pretty close to where the, the earthquake actually happened too, so crazy. Um, so keeping to those things, I have challenged myself to make a video per day. You'll see that right there on the Canvas page, to break up the monotony in your day, have something to look forward to in your routine and in my routine, let's be honest, um, and to keep the cabin fever anxiety at bay. And I want to do this to stay connected with you guys, right? Maybe this is just a small gesture of me staying connected with you, right? Um, you guys are awesome. Stay safe and stay well. Love the best Miller you'll ever Miller. All right, let's talk about... Uh, the next assignment, right? This assignment's going to seem very familiar to my TV broadcast class. It's going to be brand new for my video production class. I want you to make a mini documentary, okay? Let's go to it on the Canvas page and we'll see how that is going to run. Now, my TV broadcast kids are probably going, wait a minute, we did mini documentaries already, right? Yes, those were about Olympus, about the community, right? This doesn't necessarily have to be in our bubble, right? This could be outside of our sphere of influence, okay? And we'll see some examples of how that sort of goes beyond, beyond your sphere of influence. So here's the mini documentaries. This is going to be a, a multi-part uh, video. One is like the research phase, right? You're going to pitch ideas to me, um, and then you're going to collect the research, do the actual uh, the project, um, and then make the video on it. 
So this is this assignment is more on the serious side. Honestly, you know, some people, especially in my video production class, have made some kind of like rinky-dink funny videos. Not that that's a bad thing, um, especially you know in the the last project that we did, that we did going viral. Sometimes that's funny and people want to share it. Um, this is more of a serious tone, right? Take some kind of topic that's near and dear to you or that's affecting you that you want to basically report on. You can think of yourself as like an investigative journalist, right? Um, and you're making a documentary, a mini documentary style video that has, you know, interviews, it has B-roll, it has facts, um, it has, you know, this information that you're trying to get out there, almost like a public service announcement. Uh, it's kind of a cross between a public service announcement and a documentary, right? We're just kind of condensing it into this smaller, smaller package. Um, so yes, we are going more to the serious side on this one. I want you to create a documentary on so, something culturally or historically significant that is going on right now. And let's face it, basically everything is culturally and historically significant going on right now, right? There are so many things going on that are affecting not just our small community, not just our state, not just our country, but the whole world, right? We're all in this going on together. So. Uh, create a documentary on something culturally or historically significant that's going on right now. Choose a topic that is making local, national, or worldwide impact. If you're able to, conduct interviews and testimonials of experts that know about the topic. You might not have access to somebody from the World Health Organization or the CDC or something, but you probably have somebody within your sphere of influence that knows more than us. Now, now, don't think that means, oh, I got to spread hearsay, I got to spread lies or false information or something. No, no, no. You're going to do your research and you're going to find out from people. You could call someone from the state office of health and get an interview from them. Um, you could, um, maybe you do know someone within your sphere of influence that knows more. Um, or maybe the information that you get is primarily from the internet, right? You get it from a reliable source somewhere and then instead of getting the voice of someone, you're quoting someone from, you know, the, the official CDC website or from, you know, some place. Now, I do want your sources to be factually accurate too. Don't just go to like some, you know, crazy website that's going to give you false information. I want it to actually be factual and helpful. Um, the whole purpose of this is to change people's minds, almost like a public service announcement. We want people to think twice about the way things are going right now and how can we, you know, how can we make a change? Is hand washing really that effective? Well, actually, if you do the research, yeah, it is very effective, right? So how can we um, get more people to wash their hands and be smart about, you know, being hygienic and stuff? That's a great idea, right? That could be a mini documentary. So this is kind of a cross between the documentary style, that typical like interview documentary and like a public service announcement, right? Uh, so yeah, if you're able to conduct interviews, but sometimes it's just going to be the research that you find online, you will need to dig deep into that topic to really understand it before you can report on it, right? Don't look silly because you don't know your facts. Really dig deep and find your facts. Um, in a way, you can think of yourself as an investigative journalist, right? Dig deep on these things. Uh, record tons of B-roll, right? Way more than you think. I always like to record like just stupid amounts of B-roll, just crazy amounts of B-roll, because you're probably going to eat through the small amount that you thought you would need, um, and then suddenly you're going to need way more, right? Uh, so make tons and tons of edits, make tons of B-roll. Uh, you know, I, I always say B-roll should be at least like five seconds per clip, um, and then you move on to the next thing. Um, I, I can't wait to see some of these interviews. I bet some of, the, some of these interviews will just happen with people that you know and love. Some of them might happen over the phone, recorded. Um, some might be face-to-face -face or video chat or Zoom or Skype or you know, Google Hangouts or something. There's so many different ones. Um, but try and find some solid interview and then the B-roll goes on top of that. You know, Maybe to hide your cuts, but also just to sort of add details. The B-roll is all about the details, We're trying to add these details, um, you know, of, of what's going on and, and the facts and um, just sort of drawing us into the story, too. 
uh, record all those shots, the B-roll shots of the important details. It's all about the details, the B-roll, um, that you can be showing while you hear the interview's voice. Um, then record even more B-roll than that, right? Get, get more B-roll than you think you need. Uh, because of the current situation involving social distancing, it would be inappropriate to film in-person interviews with people outside of those you are quarantined with. You can, however, get interviews from people over the phone or record it and then dictate it later, write it down, um, or it could be you know, a video chat, you know, that sort of thing. So here's some examples of relevant topics that might affect, you know, things, think of things that are affecting, affecting you. Uh, the impact of quarantining and social distancing on the college admissions process, right? People aren't able to take the ACT. How is that going to affect our juniors becoming seniors? Um, that's huge. That's really big. Um, and, and many other topics revolving around that. Uh, possible connections between the recent earthquakes. Someone asked me if the earthquake that was just felt in Idaho and the earthquake in Magna were related to each other. And if so, are they pointing directly to Yellowstone National Park and is Yellowstone going to explode one day soon? And I'm like, oh shoot, I hope not. <laughs> we'll, we'll see, I guess. Um, do the schools really need to give out lunches in this time of quarantine? Would it be better if they didn't and people just fended for themselves? Um, do the school lunches um, really make that big an impact on our, on our neighborhoods and stuff? You'll find actually maybe it does, uh, or maybe on the, you know, in our area, maybe it doesn't, you know, depending, on, uh, depending on people's individual situations. Um, so you, that's something you'd have to research. Uh, why did everyone run and buy up all the toilet paper, right? Why is this herd mentality going on? Um, you know, the, the social implications of seeing someone do something and then everyone else doing that thing. How could we turn that around instead of like this negative swarm of people? What if we then had it become a positive spin? What are the impacts of not being physically in school uh, for students, right? Their social, their emotional and educational well-being. How is this senior class or this sophomore class or this junior class going to be different than any other class trying to graduate, right? We've all, you know, K through 12, we've all been affected by this somehow. Um, and uh, maybe someone that's just now trying to get into college, is this going to totally shake things up and make it impossible to get into college? Or is this going to be for the better somehow, right? Like what are those implications of physically not being at school? The emotional impact that it's had on being absent from school, but yet still being asked to go to school, do school, like how does that work, right? That's, that's tricky. <clears throat> so I want you to come up with your own topic and I want you to put your own spin on it, right? A lot of you guys are very good at, you know, putting flavor on your specific type of video. Um, I'm thinking of a couple of specific people in my video production class that are very good at making, um, making videos in their style, right? Put your style on it. I want to see that. But I do remember, I, I also want you to take this seriously, right? This is very much on the serious side, not just the like, oh, let's make a funny, goofy video, you know? Take this seriously. Um, here are some good examples. Um, some are not so good examples, I guess. Um, oh, that didn't save. It should have saved. Um, great examples, sorry they're all about the coronavirus right now, but yours does not have to be, right? I just named a couple of things that have nothing to do with the virus, you know, the, the school closure, ooh, I just said the C word, sorry, the school student dismissal um, and all these different things, right? Um, Vox is one of them, you've probably seen a Vox come up on your recommendations. Um, they do kind of current events, almost like news, that they're you know, exploring the, the news and the implications of what that means to, to our generations. Um, you know, why fighting the coronavirus depends on you. Okay, cool. So they're trying to make an impact on the world. How soap kills the coronavirus. Well, you know, here's things that are, you know, glad you asked. There's nothing to do with any of the things that are happening right now. But anyway, that's Vox. Um, and uh, I think Vox, they are YouTube Originals creators, so I think they've, yeah, it looks they've got 8 million subscribers. 
that is um, approximately 8 million more subscribers than I have. Um, the next one is Cheddar. Um, and Cheddar used to be sort of like goofy stuff, but it's actually, there are some really smart ones up now. Um, what makes coronavirus so infectious? How will the summer impact the coronavirus? Is it just going to make it all go away because it's warmer? Right? Pretty cool. Anyway, um, and then one that is less like what I'm looking for is Mashable. When I think of Mashable, I think of like top 10 lists and stupid things. Uh, this is more to the tune of um, Watch Mojo sort of stupid things. So I, I might shy away from kind of some of these ones. Um, they, these are just sort of clickbait things. I'm not looking for clickbait. I'm more looking for like current events that make an impact on us, this sort of thing. This week from Vox. They're, they're almost trying to be a news outlet. Um, you know, my TV broadcast class basically is a news outlet. So let's be, um, you know, let's be factually accurate and, and serious about this. So um, anyway, those are some ideas for the mini documentaries. Uh, the first part of this, part one, is just pitching your ideas to me. That's due in just over a week, um, April 10th. And what I want there is I want, here, let's go to submission. I want in your text entry box when that comes up, these four things. Number one, your main idea in detail. Tell me, don't just like spout out like two words. I want to know like why that's your topic and go, go a little more in depth. Give me a couple sentences there. Um, at least three credible sources that you will get your research from. Don't just say, I'm going to look up Wikipedia, right? Like where are you getting your sources from? Maybe do a little pre-search and see if something really good comes up. Oh, I found something really cool on, you know, this cool Time Magazine article that I'm thinking I'm going to go off of. Okay, cool. You know, give me these that are, are relevant. Maybe you haven't even fully looked over them yet. You're just like, these look very promising. These are at least three that I'm going to jump to, right? Um, number three, I want to know uh, who you could potentially get an interview from. And like I said, that interview might be over the phone. It might be, oh, you know, written and then you know dictated or something. Um, it might be an actual face-to-face -face interview with someone personal to you, but more likely it's going to be somebody that's you know over the phone or you know you find factual information somewhere and that is technically your interview, I guess. But I, I would much rather you conduct an interview, um, ask the right questions to get the right answers. Um, and then lastly, what B-roll shots will you get to fill in those visual details? Please tell me those four things um, as your submission for this part, uh, part one, pitching ideas for these mini documentaries. Okay. <clears throat> um, like I said, your mini doc is going to, uh, you guys that were in my um, TV broadcast class, that are in my TV broadcast class, um, this will seem very familiar. We just barely did, well, half did <laughs> um, the mini documentaries in um, over the third quarter starting into the fourth quarter, but we had to kind of pause everything. Um, don't feel like this is replacing that. Once we get back, I'd love to finish those. But here, now that you're working kind of on your own, be your own investigative journalist, be your own reporter, and let's make these mini documentaries. Now you notice I'm not putting a time limit on these. These might be, uh, you know, two minutes long. They might be 10 minutes long. Um, maybe somewhere within that range. Okay, don't make them a half hour long. Uh, I might, you know, I might go, okay, what else? Come on. Um, you don't want to bite off more than you can chew. Uh, but at the same time, don't just make like some 30 second little video. Really show me that you've done your research, that you've gone deep into these topics and stuff. Um, you guys are awesome. I miss you. Like I said, my video production class, you guys have made some awesome videos. Uh, I saw some of the virals. Like I said, some came up in my recommendations, which is super cool. Um, I think you guys uh, are on the right track. Uh, my TV broadcast class, it's weird not making weekly productions. I miss that. Like I really miss kind of the, the adrenaline rush, the heart pounding of like, okay, we're going live, we're going live. Um, in fact, you know, I'm, I'm getting, you know, I'm working on this, uh, this box right here that switches back and forth between the camera angles and things. Um, I, I built that not knowing that I'd need it this, this month, but, uh, you know, thinking ahead, like, okay, what, what do I need to, to do to make this happen? Um, now that I have it, I'm like, oh, dang, I can, 
you know, I, I can touch these buttons at the, at the uh, you know, I can change camera angles at the, at the touch of a button, but uh, it, it's very reminiscent of being a technical director in my video, in my TV broadcast class. So uh, I just, I miss it. You know, I miss you guys. You're awesome. Um, I hope to see you very soon. Um, we will, I guess the governor will reassess things on May 1st and see how things are doing. And uh, should we go back into school, things like that. I hope we do, because I miss you. I miss this. I miss our whole situation. Um, I hope to, um, I hope to kind of reconvene with you guys as soon as we can, right? Get back some normalcy and hopefully enjoy the last, what, three weeks of school before school is actually out. So it's just crazy. Stick to it, right? Remember giving my, uh, my, four, my four steps. Hopefully those help you. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope to see you real soon. Email me, get to me on Canvas, um, and uh, we'll talk again soon. Okay, later.